most important thing I could probably tell you about investing is that you want to learn. You want to be intelligent. You want to be educated. Learn about stocks and bonds and mutual funds, commodities, forex trading, real estate investing, drips, which is a dividend reinvestment program. It has to do with the stock market. REIT, which is real estate investment trusts. Stock splits, is which is when a stock splits. Google recently did a stock split. By the way, I love Google. An IPO is an initial public offering. That's when a company first begins to sell its stock on the public market. Facebook did its IPO just a couple of years ago. Deferred compensation programs, which they may have even through your job. Matching, matching funds investments. Your job may have such a program. For every dollar you put into their uh, the portfolio, they're going to match it. Then you have trending, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. But uh, I talked about the fact that Google did a uh, stock split. So much that you, you really should get a thorough education if you're going to dabble in this at all. And you can start by educating yourself by just getting some books, going to some forums, and maybe... And you can take some classes, but make sure you take the right classes. Make sure you take classes from somebody that is actually an investor and knows what they are doing. You don't need a lot of theory from professors that don't have two nickels to rub together. And they, all they do is maybe they have some mutual fund and they monitor it, but they're not, they don't really understand the markets that much. Because really, my admonition to you is, because investing is easy. Trading is not so easy. Between being an investor and a trader, even though this is about investing, and trading is a type of investing, but if you can learn to be a trader and become a successful trader, wow, that's where the money is. Now, I want to show you on, on this chart here, for example. Now, let's say that uh, this right here, which represents $29, is where you got in on an investment. And you watch that investment go up quickly. Look at that. Continually. You're like, wow. It's great. I got in at 29. Now it's at uh, 39. Yeah, a little dip here. But then it got back up to 39. You're like, hey, this is wonderful. But when you first got to 39, you're like, oh, excited. Started, got in at 29. Now I'm at 39. Of course, you want it to go here. Bam, 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 bam. Right? Within a short period of time. But then it looks like it started trending. This is called trending. You had a dip. You're like, oh my God. It went from 39 down to, it's not a big dip, down to uh, 37, back up to 39, went down again, back up, back down. And now it went up to 42 at its peak. Then it started trending a little bit, almost flatlined. Then it dipped. It goes up a little bit. Now it boom, 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 it dropped. And then it goes up again. Now, obviously, when you look at a chart like this, this is showing a history. When you understand investing, you will see, of course, none of us can predict the future. But one of the first things I would tell people to do when it comes to try to understanding charting and investing in the whole world of trading is to understand what you're looking at here. And I would ask a student, show me the opportunities. Obviously, this is past performance. And when you're here, you don't know that's going to happen. You don't know any of this is going to happen. So whatever point you look at, you've got the trends behind you that you can look in the rearview mirror and see what happened. But you never know what the future is going to hold. But there are reasonable, plausible predictions that you can make. First of all, why did you get in here? Because if you got in at this point at $29, you know that this stock has been at $46. See, what happens is a lot of people who got in here, they saw their stock rise here. And then it started dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. They sell. They sell because they're still in profit because they got in here. 
they'd rather pull out whatever profit they have rather than to go down to here. Now they've actually lost money. When they get below where they got in, now they're losing money. Okay? And a lot of these people, they never get back in. So when it goes down to 29, a lot of these people have already bailed out. Some of them have bailed out lower than they got in, so they lost money. And they don't get back in because now they're emotionally afraid. But you got in here. And some of these people said, okay, that's a dying stock. He got in at 29, and they're thinking it might they, you might lose money too. But no, it starts going up. Up, up, up quickly. Look how quick it went up. You're excited. And then it starts trending. Right? But see, there are tremendous opportunities here. And the average person doesn't see the opportunities. There's opportunities all over the place. There's even opportunities here. And here. This was a tremendous opportunity. That's right, when it just whoop, shot down. That's quick money. Because see, you can make money whether the stock goes up which everybody understands that. You buy low, you sell higher. You could actually make money if you bought here and sold here. Or even better, if you bought here and sold way down here. You did really good. See, in fact, what I want you to notice is that uh, a stock can sometimes drop even quicker than it rises. Imagine if you got in here and then you sold here. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, then you might not see the potential. It's called being a short seller. You anticipate the stock's going to drop. See, stocks have momentum. And a lot of times the trends happen because of they are driven by emotional exuberance. <laughs> uh is one of the terms that's been used, emotional exuberance. And sometimes it is irrational exuberance. Irrational exuberance sometimes can drive a stock up quickly because of good news. And irrational exuberance and fear can also cause a stock to drop quickly because of bad news. You see, there's even opportunity here. If you bought here, sold here, Bought here, sold there or there, bought here, sold there, bought here, wrote it up, came back down, sold here, bought there, sold there. If you short sell, you bought here, predicted a negative downward trend, wrote it all the way down to the bottom. And then bought again and wrote it back up. Within this chart here was tremendous opportunity for those that understand it. Now, it doesn't matter if you understand or understood any of what I just did or showed you. You're not supposed to if you don't already. The only purpose of that is to let you know that it is well worth your while and your time to learn these things. You want a personal recommendation from me, I'm going to recommend several things. One of them is a company. I've been a subscriber for years. It is The Motley Fool. Look it up. Go to Google, The Motley Fool. Okay, They can give you a lot of information on the whole world of investing and trading and that type of thing. There's newsletters that they have. They've got uh, programs that you can use. They've got all types of things. You get a monthly newsletter. And even if you've never invested, it's not that expensive. It's worth it. They, they have a great reputation and for giving a lot of successful recommendations, this is The Motley Fool. Okay? I also would recommend a company. It's called the Online Trading Academy. You can just put that in your uh, browser. OnlineTradingAcademy.com Okay? Now, one of the stocks that I love, one of the companies I love that I'm absolutely in love with is Google. I'm not crazy about Google taking over YouTube. In fact, <laughs> I hate it, actually, even though I'm a part owner of Google myself. And by the way, when you start investing, you in, in stocks in particular, that's what you are. You are an owner of a company. When you own stocks, you own a share in a company. And a share means that you are a part owner of that company. 
Now you're a minuscule, actually irrelevant player unless you own, <laughs> you know, just billions of dollars worth of shares. But that's basically what you are, and uh, you stand to benefit from the success of these companies. And there are different uh, theories and strategies of trading and investing, but one of the ones I like best is what I call Warren Buffettology, and that's what Warren Buffett does, and that is you understand that. Uh, Forget all the charts and all. I'm not, I don't mean forget them, but rather than just focus on the uh, charts and the trends and things like that, focus on the company itself, the company and the people behind the company, the marketing, the education, the experience of the people behind the company and what they are doing, what where they are going. And from what I know about Google, Google, you cannot lose with Google. I knew that from the beginning when they did their IPO. Google stock has done excellent and it's going to continue to do excellent. It's going to do better and it's still a good time to get in. Because especially because Google stock has recently split, <coughs> and um, let's say you got in here and you still own it, you see. But anyway, like I said, we're not going to do an exhaustive discourse on any of these topics. We're just pointing you in the right direction. And showing you, like I said, there are many paths to reach any destination. And I'm showing you a path that if you take it, if you choose to, if you follow it, if you're diligent, if you're serious, it can take you to financial freedom. To recap, we're talking about investing because you have money to invest, because you live a frugal lifestyle, you live below your means, and you don't spend every dime that you make, every dime that you get. Before I show you how to make some money, how to invest in it in income-producing assets, how to use money to make money, how to use credit to make money, how to use credit and money wisely to invest money so that you will have money to invest in the various things you can invest in. That's what people do. It's one of the business I've been involved in also was a vending business, that type of vending. At a young age, I started doing that as a young age. So I talk about that and then um, uh, investing in flipping uh, real estate or recreational vehicles, motorcycles, boats, cars, businesses I've been involved in as well, flipping. Um, investing in income producing assets such as ATM machines, vending, industrial equipment, real estate, rooming houses, uh, duplex, fourplex, own at least two units, subletting. And by the way, the concept of owning at least two units means that even if you buy your first home and it's your you know house that you live in, buy a second home too. Buy a second home because I'm telling you, I don't have time to get into all the wisdom behind that, but it is a incredibly powerful thing for you to do. Don't just buy, you know, two units could either be a duplex, that's at least two units, or it could be two separate houses, or it could be a front house, and then you build a back house onto the back of the front house. And uh, I talked about your due diligence, uh, positioning yourself in the right place, uh, creating new credit, establishing excellent credit is where we started, and it's all about the road to financial freedom. I want to talk about one more thing, and then I'm going to let you go. When I talk about uh, creating at least, owning at least two units, a uh, good friend of mine, a Jamaican guy who's a multi-millionaire also, he um, he had a house, and it was actually in a decent area, and uh, he had an, he did not ha not have a big backyard at all, but he basically paid $10,000 to a contractor to build him a, another unit on the back of his house, okay, and uh, he built it, oh, he had a separate garage, so he just built the, from the ground up, a separate unit in the back of his house. And it was a pretty nice bachelor pad. You know, he basically designed it himself. And the entire, it was two stories. The entire second story was his bedroom, which was pretty big. And uh, he was living rent-free. And by living rent-free, that allowed him to free up more of his own capital. So he, didn't, he no longer had to pay a mortgage out of his pocket. And he still owned the house. It allowed him to actually buy more real estate and more property. And ultimately, he, you know, made millions doing these things. But I'm just saying, this is one of the things that he did starting at a young age. And you can do the same thing. That's just one example. 